Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, part 9 of the Trumpeter 200 scale Bismarck build. This week, uh, and probably next week, I'm going to be building the forward superstructure. You know from the last two or three episodes I've been concentrated on the aft superstructure deck. This is the fore one. Uh, but as I mentioned last time, because it's so similar to in construction to the previous couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing this off camera. Uh, there's one or two little bits and pieces on it that I will show you because they're slightly different to the aft section. But in the main it's a repeat of what we've done over the last two or three videos. But because I didn't want to leave it uh, two or three weeks before the next part of the series, I've done a little bit of work in addition to the superstructure which is to start to build some of the uh, smaller anti-aircraft weapons on the ship. So I've done a few of the 35mm twin mounts and I've done a couple of the 20mm single mounts. So to keep things ticking along I'll bring the camera over to the bench and I'll show you how those guns go together. Okay so this week I'm going to be kicking off building some of these 37mm uh, twin mountings. These were anti-aircraft uh, weapons. They were built by Rheinmetall uh, and designated C-30 guns. So there were eight of these on the ship altogether, four forward and four aft. I'll build the four for the aft superstructure that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. These guns were fitted to quite a few of the German capital ships leading up to the Second World War. But actually, by 1941, they were fairly obsolete. And the reason for that was that they had to be loaded with single shells for firing. So they weren't automatic in any way. Uh, and because of that, they had a really low rate of fire. And obviously, when pitched against modern fast-flying uh, aircraft, uh, it would be difficult to hit anything because they were just so slow to reload. So we'll make a start and uh, get the trumpeter parts sorted out. This uh, pair of photographs here is all really that Pontos give us about constructing these 37mm guns. Uh, and the difficulty I had was identifying the trumpeter parts that we needed for the build. And that's because Pontos don't bother to number the trumpeter parts that uh, we're going to be using. But I worked out which ones you do need and I've made a list of them at the side of the screen. Now if you're building this yourself and you don't want to try and work all this out, uh, these are the parts that you're going to need from the trumpeter kit to start with. So I'll get them cut off the sprue and we'll make a start and put them together. So I'll just prepare the trumpeter parts first of all and there is a lug on the side of the pedestal which is for these covers these were actually for the gyroscope uh, covers but if we fit those now it just prevents the correct placement of the Pontos base plate so I'm uh, leaving that off for the time being, but removing those lugs means that you can position the covers exactly where you need them. Otherwise they sit a bit too low and it snags on the base plate. So leaving them off just makes the job easier. Make sure the bottom's flat. And then next we've got the pedestal base, which is this part. And I'll fit the pedestal onto it now because the front panel, again, if you fit that now, it's going to lead to problems of alignment later on. I'll just tag that into place. Uh, 
then the front cover can go on and butt it right down onto the base plate. So it's just easier to do it that way around. Or more accurate anyway. This part mounts the training wheels at the front. Let's get that nice and square. And then just put that whole assembly to one side for the moment, just to let it dry whilst I do the gun barrels. So we're using the trumpeter breeches and fitting some Pontos turned brass uh, gun barrels. So we just cut the barrels off, the plastic barrels off at the breech. And now we've got the job of drilling these out for the brass barrels, which are these. So you can see how small they are. Pontos suggested 0.5mm drill. The problem is that this part isn't much more than 0.5mm wide at the end. So you've got to be very accurate with drilling. Otherwise you'll just destroy the part basically. You just drill right the way through the side. So this is an area where it's essential I think to mark the centre of the hole that you're going to be drilling because there's no room for error at all with this. So obviously we want to be going into this nice and square and in the middle. just see how that looks okay that's going to go in all right so I'll glue those straight away with some medium CA yippee we've got some rain Very welcome. Top the tanks up again. So we'll leave those barrels to set for a while and move on to the photo etch. So the first thing I'm going to do is fix the base plate. All the rest of the construction uh, goes onto this so you need to have this as a foundation and have it nice and well fixed down. So I'll attach this with some CA, some medium CA. Down at the bottom of the pedestal. And there's a little lug at the bottom on the trumpeter plastic that will just help to seat that down. So obviously we want to make sure that it's level from the front and the sides. And then once it is, I'll just drop a little bit more glue on the underneath. As I said, you want a really good fixing for this part. 
everything else builds on it so nice and secure and with that in place the base plate I can now add the gyroscope covers and because I remove the little tabs they'll go where we want them to go I'll do the rest of the photo etch now and we have some brackets these go on the base plate and again the reason why it's easy to do these at this stage is so that you can butt them up to the pedestal if you try and fit them to the base plate beforehand chances are you'll break them off and secondly you're not likely to get them in the correct position these smaller uh, brackets go at the sides But it's the same principle, just put them up to the pedestal. These are the uh, plastic trumpeter frames for the crew seats, and I think trumpeter provide photo etch seats to go on top of these I'm going to use the uh, Pontos alternatives These are the seats with their frames. These have uh, a couple of folds. We have to fold the seat over first of all. And then the second fold is just a very slight bend down just to give us an angle on the seat. One part that uh, Pontos leave out of the instructions are these trumpeter pieces and these are for the sights. So uh, we really do need to fit them. It's quite a prominent part of the gun. Then we have some uh, training wheels and elevation wheels, I guess. They locate uh, onto the end of this trumpet apart. one either side the only thing to be careful with with these is that you get the handle facing in the opposite direction to the other the handles have to be bent but we'll do that in a moment once uh, the wheel is set. Now I can fit the barrels 
these are quite tricky really because the pivots in the trumpeter kit are quite tight and obviously these are fairly fragile so you don't want to force them too much The glue actually is just a bit of a lubricant so it does help the barrel slot into place. Now, before the glue sets I just want to make sure that the barrels are parallel and at the same sort of elevation. One thing that I hate to see on model ships is barrels that are facing all over the place. I'll just keep an eye on them for a minute or two. This last piece is the elevation arc, it just goes in between the guns. When I'm looking at this, I'm just thinking back to when I built the Airfix 1600 scale Bismarck in the 60s, probably the mid 60s. And I distinctly remember these guns. They were just a blob of plastic with a couple of sticks uh, sticking out of them and we just no idea at that stage how the hobby was going to develop to the stage where you'd get something so detailed as this available to build I think the uh, Airfix kits just been re-released I think it's a fairly popular subject in the airfix range it been in and out of the catalog for quite a while okay so i'll just let that set up that's all okay leave it to dry then we'll come back and prime all four of these guns that i've built so next i'm going to build a couple of these uh, 20 millimeter C30 guns. These were single mountings. And originally when the ship was commissioned, uh, it carried 12 of these mountings in various parts of the superstructure. But a couple of them were removed in April 1941. So by the time the ship left uh, for the Denmark Strait, there were 10 of these on board. Uh, 10 is far too many to build in one session so I'm just going to be doing two of them uh, and they'll fit on the upper deck house eventually. These are the Trumpeter C30s and the single piece items so you just cut those off, paint them and fit them to the model. So they'll be replaced completely with Pontos photo etch and a couple of turn brass parts. So as I did with the 35mm guns, I'm going to build these from the pedestal upwards. So this is the turn brass pedestal that uh, Pontos provide. And we also have a very fine brass barrel as well. The rest is all photo etch, which is on the same fret that we've been working on. So fret four. The first thing to do is to fit the pedestal base. 
It's a bit of a puzzle really because Pontos uh, provide 12 of some of the parts for these guns uh, but only 11 for other parts so you can't build 12 complete guns uh, from the Pontos set so you couldn't do the ship as commissioned with the 12 mountings on it but I'll have a couple of spares in case of any mess ups uh, because I'm only building 10. The next part to do is the cradle which goes on top of the pedestal. So that just folds into uh, basically a tray with the pivot mounting right in the centre there. This perches fairly precariously on top of the pedestal. And when it's fitted correctly, uh, the bar here slopes up at an angle. And you need to make sure that that's really secure because the rest of the gun relies on that connection. You can see there the angle that we've got on the uh, mounting bracket. Start to do the gun now. So we've got the brass barrel and we have a breech. So this has to be folded into basically a tray that the barrel fits into. And it's quite narrow, so it's difficult to bend. I just use the reverse side of a knife blade. And that just helps to form it accurately and nice and square. There are two very small tabs at the end which have to be folded over. And tiny though they are, they're important because they just locate the gun barrel correctly. These barrels are very, very fine. So that just drops into the breech like that. And I'll just secure it with some thin super glue. One thing you've got to make sure of when you fit in this is that there's a very small slot in the side of the breech and therefore the ammunition feed and ejection shoots. So it has to be forward towards the centre of the gun. The next part to sort out is this one. And this carries the sights and it's the part that actually mounts onto uh, this pivot here that we've just fitted. The sight itself is over here, but uh, I found that it's easier not to fold that just at the moment. Uh, just leave it flat and just make sure that we get this cradle folded up properly. I think if you try and fold the site up at this stage there's more chance of breaking it so uh, I just leave it flat so again we've got 
a tray to fold up there. Just fold the site down to the side. That'll be its position eventually and the site just gets folded up towards the end of the process. It's quite tricky to get this located accurately because it just needs to attach onto these pins uh, on the bracket there. But there's not much contact point and getting it all lined up is uh, not the easiest thing to do. So as you can see at this stage I'm leaving the sights flat out of the way. Next we'll just drop the gun into the cradle or into the tray that we've just fitted. So I'll just put that assembly to one side for a moment whilst I build the ready use rack for the spare ammunition cartridges. And this is a pretty uh, tricky piece of photo etch to get together. So we've got this part here which is the main part of the rack and then we have some tiny uh, fillets if you like just to separate and segregate the different cartridges. So we'll start with the main part of the rack, so fold the back up and the sides as well. You might just be able to make out at the bottom of the tray there are four slots with tiny holes in uh, and there to locate these fillets which divide the uh, ammunition rack up. It's a good sign that that's sticking to my finger because it means that the little pin on the dividers has gone through the holes. So uh, we know that they're located correctly. When all those parts are in position I'll just turn it on its back and just put some glue at the back side of the uh, tray. Hopefully that should seal everything in. Okay one spare ammunition rack. The other fairly complicated part of the build is this uh, basket which was for the ejected uh, shell cartridges. I guess it uh, just stops the cartridges rolling around the deck. Uh, 
and this has quite a few folds in it to form the basket. And with a complicated shape like this, I find the best thing to do is just to gradually bend the parts up. And you can see the various angles then. So gradually form the sides around. And eventually it will come round into that basket shape. Now because it's a basket sort of weave effect on this so you can see through the mesh if you like uh, I don't want to put a lot of glue on this otherwise you'll just block the mesh up and it'll spoil the effect so I just use the smallest of dabs just in the corner just enough to tack it down So that'll just hold its shape like that without spreading glue all over the place. So there we are, two very small uh, assemblies, but they add a lot to the uh, mounting once uh, they're in position. So the ready use rack just fits on the front of the pedestal. Just make sure that it's uh, centralised. I'll just leave the cartridge uh, basket off for the moment and apply this next part which is the magazine. This is a 180 degree fold The magazine goes onto the side of the breech. You remember those slots that we located on the breech when we were folding it up. Next we have an elevation wheel. And this just locates down on the pedestal. Like that. There is a handle on it, but we'll turn that up once that uh, wheel is set. Next we'll put the uh, brace for the gunner. So this has some cradles for the shoulders which fold upwards. And this fits on the underside of the breech. It is slightly angled so the gunner uh, wasn't looking down the gun, down the line of the gun, but to the left si left side of the uh, barrel uh, and through these sights which we've got here. 
So you can see how the uh, cradle is offset there. With all that in place I can now fold the sights. So you remember I left these flat out of the way so they didn't get damaged. But uh, now it's time to fold it up. They're very fine and actually on the other one I built I broke that off. So uh, they're very very delicate. The last thing to fit to this is the spent cartridge basket and we've got this stay here which locates down onto the pedestal but that's all that holds this on so it's quite tricky to get it uh, to stay. Just have to be patient until the CA goes off. And once it has, we can just make the adjustments that we need to get the basket in the correct position. So with the basket uh, fitted, that's nice and secure now. That's uh, one of the guns done. So I have another eight of those to build. I've got the second one that I did earlier on. So uh, the first two there, ready for the ship. So I'll try and get some close-up photographs of those in the brass, if you like, uh, before I prime them, ready to go on the model. But uh, I'm going to give my eyes a rest. I think, it, for me, I can only do a couple of those in a session. They take about 40 minutes each to build. And... Uh, Obviously it does take a toll on the eyesight, so I'm going to give them a rest now after those two. Just a quick comparison with the equivalent trumpeter part. Take a few seconds to prepare that. As opposed to, as I said, 40 minutes for me to do one of those. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how they've turned out. I'll get some nice close-up photographs of them. I've done the painting of the 35mm and the 20mm singles, which is basically involved primer, uh, a top coat, and then I've done some detail painting to pick the various colours out on the guns. So you'll see those at the end of the video in the still photographs. So I'll carry on with that superstructure work, as I said. And I've already thought of a few things to do for next Friday's video. That will be part 10. Uh, and as usual, that will be on Friday night, premiering at 8 o'clock. So I hope uh, you'll be able to join me for that, everybody. In the meantime, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.